Alright guys, so this video is long overdue. This video was not planned. I did not wake up this morning thinking that I was going to make this video. This video is something that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about for the absolute longest, but I just never got a chance to talk to you guys about it. Um, and this is something that I know I need to address for all of my subscribers. So, here we go. Any noise that you guys hear in the background, I'm sorry, I have my AC on. It's obnoxiously loud. But, um, I did want to come and talk to you guys about my addiction that I've had and been battling since I've been a kid. Again, guys, this is not something that I planned today, so it's going to be a lot of things that I may, that may be choppy. Some things may not be in chronological order. Some things may just seem like you're jumping from place to place. I'm going to try my best to get the information out as best as possible. So, again, going forward, just please forgive me if it's not in the order that it makes sense. So, the addiction that I'm talking about is my food addiction. I have been battling my food addiction since I was a little kid. I've always been that kid that was always um, bullied in school, very bullied in school about my weight, which is crazy because when I was in elementary school, I was a taller and heavier kid, but when I got to high school, middle school, I became still a thicker and chubby kid, but I became the shorter kid. And growing up, I was bullied from family, friends, and just people around me. People didn't realize how much I was going through at the time. I was the only child. I did not have my dad in my life. Um, all the men in my life did crazy things to me that I will not speak of, it's kind of private. But I didn't have the best upbringing. I don't think anybody really had the best upbringing. Some of you guys may have had good upbringings and you guys can boast about it, but and I didn't have a terrible upbringing. I won't make it seem like that either, but I didn't have the absolute best upbringing. My upbringing was filled with a lot of fighting, a lot of hate, a lot of disgust, a lot of dislike, and no one getting along. And I knew growing up, my mom, she struggled with her own battles when she was younger. And me and my mom being so close in age because of how young she had me. I was being raised by a child and it's not to say that she didn't try her best but I was being raised by a child and looking at the kids nowadays and how they're you know so young raising a, their own child it's like I can see now the struggles that she had but needless to say I I had to suffer through a lot of that too a lot of my pain growing up was from a lot of the negativity that went on in my life. I hated the fact that I didn't have my dad in my life. I hated the fact that my mom worked so much. I hated the fact that no one was teaching me how to be a woman. I hated the fact that nobody was there for me, so I felt. But I felt like I was groomed to be the responsible one to take care of other people, which I hated. I still hate to this day. I appreciate it now that I'm older, but I don't like the fact that I didn't have a childhood. I was one of those kids who was groomed to take care of my cousins and take care of things around the house. I mean, first and second grade, I was walking home by myself, had a key to the house, would go to the house, cook food on the stove with my grandmother. My mom was never around because she was constantly working and living her life with her husband. Her grandmother was working and a drunk, you know, and I was my my aunt. Lord knows what was going on with her. She lost custody of all of her kids and I had to 
pretty much take the spot of a sister mother role when I was younger to take care of her kids and all of her kids have special needs no matter if it's great or to the lowest level they have some type of mental disorder all of them do or learning disability I should say um or both so being in first and second grade and having to go to the house by myself cook by myself having to leave the house go pick up my little cousin because he was writing a different or he was coming from a different school because he had special needs and I had to go pick him up to go back to the house to cook for him and then maybe one of the adults would show up and cook for us for dinner or whatever the case is there have been several times or several instances where I have been left at home alone by myself for hours on end before someone showed up to the house because I was the responsible one and I had so much of a great responsibility on me as a kid and it sucked it really did suck because I never had a childhood I never was that kid that had friends in school because I had responsibilities after school I was never that kid who had homegirls or girlfriends because I just, no one liked me growing up. No one liked me because I was that kid that just stood away from people because I didn't know how to be social. I wasn't allowed to be social growing up. I wasn't allowed to have a lot of friends. I wasn't allowed to have friends. And a lot of it was because my parent or my mom and my grandmother wanted me to be one of those kids who stayed away, stayed out of drama, and didn't have a lot going on, which again, I do appreciate, which I do respect, because I don't have that issue now, but it's affected me in my life and how to be social. So, as a young kid, I just started eating because I felt pain. I didn't have any friends. I was super young, being responsible. Um, things when I was a kid had happened to me I was taking care of other people's children and being a responsible adult as a young kid so all I did was stay at home and eat eat and eat and eat because I didn't have any friends I couldn't go out I couldn't do anything as a kid because I was so responsible for everything else and so responsible for other people's stuff and my family appreciated that but they didn't understand how much of a childhood your child needs in order to prosper in life and um, as I got older I started to see my friends like bloom into these beautiful girls and I was a short fat kid that had thick eyebrows my complexion was dark and I was constantly made fun of from my family to friends and friends of the family Oh, girl, you fat. Oh, you real fat. Oh, you got a big butt. Oh, you real thick for your age. You need to slow down. And the crazy thing is, because I was a bigger kid, they would feed me because I was that fatter kid. And the expectation was every time I give you a plate, give me double of everything. So I wouldn't have to ask a lot of the time to have double of everything. They would just give it to me because they kind of figured that's what I wanted. So they would feed it to me without me really even asking it. So it kind of fed into my addiction even more. And as I got older and older, my aunt had more kids and more of the responsibility was on me. And instead of focusing on school, I was focused on being a mom, so to speak. Focus on raising someone else's kids. Focus on helping them with their homework before I helped myself with my own homework was never that kid who actually got help from my mom with homework. She never helped me with homework. Matter of fact, school wasn't the important thing. It was she was constantly working. And a lot of that was because she needed to work. She had to have her own education. But no one paid attention to me. No one paid attention to my needs. I was always the one that had to pay attention to other people's needs. And it sucked because school was terrible for me. I would go home with homework and no one cared if I did my homework or not. I could say I did my homework and they'd be like, okay, and go watch TV and that'd be it. No one gave me the special attention that I needed in order for me to be groomed. 
no one gave me the attention I needed to be a woman. No one gave me the attention I needed to study in school. No one gave me the attention I needed to check my homework. Hell, no one gave me the attention I needed to even go to my open houses to meet my teachers. <laughs> and those times that my mom would show up to meet my teachers, it was always bad because it was every blue moon you would show up to meet my teachers or my grandmother would show up to meet my teachers. So it was never something that was a consistent thing. And getting older and older, school became a fashionable thing. And again, because I kept getting bigger and bigger in my own personal life, when I got to school, I couldn't fit the regular clothes. My grandmother would have to shop for me in the adult section when I was in middle school and in high school instead of shopping for me in the kids section where I should have been shopped for. And the crazy thing was every year I dreaded going to school shopping. I hated it because it was always some smart remark. Dang, you got so big over the last year. Girl, you're so fat. And my grandma would poke my stomach and she would like poke And not only that, but my mom's ex-husband and his family would make so much fun of me growing up. And I was bullied by them more than anybody, to be honest. And I hated his family. Even to this day, I don't too much care for them because they they were not good people to me growing up. And it's so crazy because now that I'm older, they're trying to be nice to me. But when I was a kid, they were pretty evil to me, to be honest with you. Um, because they didn't like my mom, they would mistreat me. And they would call me names and feed me certain type of food before they would feed their kids certain type of food. Or they would talk about me behind my back and talk about my mom behind her back. And they would sabotage all types of situations. Um, because they hated my mom for whatever reason. So that drive or drove me to eat even more. Um, that family did something bad to me when I was growing up. I never spoke to them about that. Um, my mom's husband doesn't know about it. My mom knows about it. So that family did something to really traumatic to me growing up that really changed my life forever. And um, I think, honestly, that's when my life started to change. And after that point, someone in my own family did something very similar. And that was very traumatic in my life. And at that point, I was like, that's, that's it. Like, I don't care. You know, I'm being made fun of. I'm... No one's paying attention to me. No one cares about me. No one cares about my feelings. No one cares about my needs, my wants. And people just, they hate me for whatever reason. And I started to feel really ugly. and started to feel really lonely. I was the only child growing up. And um, I hated myself for years. I hated myself. I hated the way I looked. I hated how black I was. I hated how fat I was. I hated how short I was. I hated how I couldn't dress like my schoolmates. I hated how I couldn't fit in normal clothes like my schoolmates. I hated how my boobs were bigger than my schoolmates. And I just hated myself growing up. And it was a lot of it was because a lot of bullying in school. So I just ate. And I ate and I ate and I ate. It would be times where I would sneak food into my room. I would go downstairs in the middle of the night or in the kitchen in the middle of the night and I would steal food and just eat all night long and no one knew. My bed would be full of chip bags. It would be full of just like plates sometimes. I have plates under my bed. But I was constantly just eating because I was just so depressed and no one cared. They saw me getting bigger but they could care less about like how I was getting bigger, why I was getting bigger, anything of that sort. And um, I just felt like I was just never enough for anybody because I was constantly just everything i was told i was stupid you're ugly you know you're dumb you can't do this you can't do that you're just like so and so like i was just constantly just bombarded with all type of negativity growing up and so i just turned to food and of course anybody that has a similar situation or any type of addiction food doesn't judge you it doesn't talk about you it doesn't disrespect you it smells good it looks good it tastes good 
it's a good idea it sounds good when it cooks it sounds good when you talk about it like everything about food is perfect no matter what kind of food it's perfect um and I carried it up into my adulthood. The boys didn't like me growing up at all. And the only thing that they would like about me if they did was because I had a big butt. They didn't care about me. They didn't care about how beautiful that I was trying to be. And that's it. I couldn't. As I got older, I tried to develop friendships with females. And it never worked out ever because couldn't you know like when you're young like oh girl let me let me try on your shirt oh my god it looks so cute on me let's go shopping we can shop we can i can use that and borrow your things and you know how you borrow stuff from your girlfriends and stuff like that and dress in their clothes or dress like them or like twin day or stuff like that i could never be that because i was always so big and i remember growing up and in middle school i remember this one time um I was in middle school, and that day the school was selling nachos or giving out nachos for lunch. And the nachos were chili and cheese and jalapenos, like any other nachos. So the first plate I took, set it at my table, and someone in front of me looked at me and they were just like, You don't need that. You're so damn fat. You don't need it anyway. And she reached over in my plate, and it was like a little cur little carton. She reached over my plate, grabbed it, and threw it in my shirt. So my entire shirt was full of food. And she thought it was funny. Everyone around them thought it was funny. So I laughed. Of course, I thought it was funny as well, but it wasn't funny. And I sat there for a while, and I finally got up and threw it away. Well, because I was really hungry, I went back in line and got a second nacho. The lunch lady said, really? You come back for seconds? You so damn fat, you left a freaking mess on your shirt, you come back for seconds? And little did she realize that I didn't even eat my food. Someone had literally put my food or push my food all over my shirt and didn't even realize or she didn't even know the situation but she judged me before she even knew what was really going on and I remember taking that extra one and I sat down at the table and lunch was almost over I looked at it and I looked at everyone else like damn you have a second one god damn you fat and mind you, I wasn't like a huge kid. I wasn't a huge kid. I was just really big for my age. Like really developed booty, hips, butt, thighs, everything, belly. I, I had everything. And I literally looked at it and I threw it away. I just, I couldn't eat that day because, I, and I was starving, mind you. I was starving. And... I think that's probably one of the most embarrassing situations that ever happened to me when I was in middle school. As I got older into my adult years, I got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And at my highest, I reached 275 pounds. For some people, it may not seem like it's that big, but for a person like me, that was huge because I wasn't used to being that big. So, um, as I got bigger, more people started to notice my pants started to show me and comments started to fly out of nowhere my, my mom would she's so fat like you know it would just it would just be one of those things like a shocker every time someone would see me like god you're so fat my grandmother would be like my god you're huge to them because they've never seen me that big and to live with people or live around people that constantly would just talk about you and how fat you were was just the most depressing thing ever 
and there have been times where I've gone to restaurants and I couldn't fit in a booth because the tables didn't move but I couldn't fit to get into the booth because the tables wouldn't move so I had to sit at a regular table and it was one of the most embarrassing things and that's how I knew like I was just getting too big I remember another situation where I went to a restaurant and I had picked up my food because I worked right next door picked up my food went to my job and as I'm walking is a couple with their two children and the kid yells out mommy she's fat now that sounds like something out of a comic book I swear it really does that moment was the most depressing I said other moments were depressing, but that moment literally made me go home early from work that day. And I went home crying because this kid literally saw me pick up my food from the restaurant to go back to my job on my lunch break and says, Mommy, she's fat behind me. And anyone that knows me know that I would look back and be like, what? But I didn't. I literally just let that linger and I stopped my tracks slightly and I heard the mom say shh don't say that and it was like one of those things like they said it anyway and the damage has already been done and I went home early from work that day and I ate I ate more and I ate more and I ate more I ate and I ate and I ate and, I ate. and I would eat when I wasn't even hungry. I would eat on days where I've had a full day of eating all day long and I'm still gonna go home and eat. And my addiction carried me and I still have the addiction to this day. My addiction has really ruined my life because I fought so hard through my entire journey to lose the 100 pounds and even now I still have a food addiction even when I'm not even hungry I find myself wanting to eat stuff and I'm like I can't through my entire journey I've gone up and down on my weight because I have these moments where I want to binge eat and then I have these moments I feel guilty and I start losing weight but then my binge eating comes back and here we go again so my weight has always been back and forth and um there had been times where I literally thought I was going to die in my sleep. I'm not going to lie. Because there had been times where I couldn't breathe when I was sleeping. I couldn't breathe. Just waking up sometimes I just I would feel my chest and be so tight because I just couldn't breathe. I had so much fat around my neck I could not breathe at night sometimes. I couldn't tie my shoes <laughs> at all. At my heaviest I couldn't tie my shoes. I couldn't bend over I couldn't climb two stairs without me getting overly exhausted and over exerted I just felt really depressed and I just felt really stressed and there's been a lot of other situations where I've broken chairs literally I've broken chairs there's been times where I've broken the arm off of the seat because I was just too heavy there's been times where I've actually <laughs> there's been times where um I've sat down on um, um, this is like really hard for me to talk about I don't want to get emotional because I don't feel like that's just something I want to do right now but um, I remember a time where I actually broke my car seat before driver's seat I've broken it and um having to get it repaired was one of the most embarrassing things ever because 
the seat literally literally started to the fluff from the, the chair the the, the the stuffing for the chair came out twice in my car and I remember breaking my and I never told anybody this because I never even told any of my family this has happened to me but I've broken the armrest to my seat from literally just leaning on it and just broken half. I've ripped through pants before, literally ripped through pants. I've ripped through shirts before. I've ripped through a lot of things before and it started to become something that I knew that was unhealthy for me and I have not yet fought my food addiction, meaning I have not conquered over it yet. I still have my food addiction, but I've come a long way. But I still get afraid of those days where my food addiction is going to take over because I feel like my willpower is still weak and it shouldn't be as weak as it is. As I've lost my weight, I have started to see beauty within myself something I've never seen before something I've always told that's been there for been there with me but I've just never seen it before and um, I'm determined to fight this food addiction some of you guys may see it like 100 pounds is a great victory and trust me it's a huge victory but the thing is my mental is still fat it's still unhealthy you guys see 100 pound weight loss i still look in the mirror every day and see that 275 pound girl i look at myself all the time and say you're so fat you're so disgusting why do you do this stuff to yourself and i don't want to have that mental capacity or that mental thought anymore I'm about 15 pounds away from being at my goal weight. I have not lost any weight recently because I've been battling my food addiction. Again, it's come back to haunt me. <laughs> and it sucks because I should be about 160, 150 right now with all the hard work I have been putting in. But um, my addiction is exactly what it is. It's an addiction. And I hope that I'm able to inspire people to come out about their food addiction or any other type of addiction that they may have and try their best to conquer it the best way they know how, the best way I'm trying to learn how. And um, I thank all of you guys for being my subscribers. I'm sorry if this video was kind of like a Debbie Downer or just did not seem like it's something you're interested in, but this is just me coming out about my addiction. and. I thank you guys all so much for watching so um i'm sorry if it wasn't something that was very interesting to you but this is me not planning to speak about my addiction today so maybe one day i can do a different video on it but if you guys want to see more videos please make sure you go ahead and like comment subscribe do not forget to press the bell notification so you guys will be notified every time i upload a video and please make sure you guys follow me on instagram i will have an instagram name here it is I am Ray Simone, and please follow me there on my journey. I am on a journey to inspire as many people in the world the best way I know how. So thank you guys all for supporting me, and I'll see you guys later.